Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tim Dillon Show live from Los Angeles, California, an undisclosed location. Anyway, <laughs> everybody happy? Did you watch the Academy Awards? Wasn't that fun? See Joaquin Phoenix go up there and talk about milk. Man, Hollywood's dead, huh? It's just the carcass of an industry. It truly is. Nobody cares. Everybody, Pacino, De Niro, these people don't die. They just keep going. I don't know how they get the best medical care. They're legends. They're literally legends now. Like you see them, you're like, is that them? They're literally chupacabra-like when you see them on the red carpet. And then you have Joaquin Phoenix up there uh, talking about uh, the abuse of animals. How many states do they want Trump to win? 40? 45? What would make them happy? Brad Pitt's up there doing impeachment jokes. Uh, they gave more time than they gave uh, Adam Schiff. I forget which guy he mentioned, but he's up there doing imp you know impeachment. It's like no one paid attention to to the impeachment process. By the way, it, it came on the heels of the other fake thing you did about Russia that didn't make any fucking sense. That you were unable to prove. You had Robert Mueller, and everybody's going to prove everything. We're going to prove that uh, you know. Putin and Trump or in communicado, you were able to prove zero, nothing, not a nilch. It was an embarrassment. Instead of talking about healthcare and jobs, you're writing a spy novel that nobody wants to read. Okay? You have Chelsea Handler and Kathy Griffin out there talking about espionage as if they have a fucking clue as to anything that goes on. Chelsea Handler is now an expert in espionage. She spent a decade talking about her snatch. <laughs> and now she's talking about, uh, you know counterintelligence. I mean, guys, shut up. Enough. I'm starting to think they are Republicans. I'm starting to think all these Hollywood fucks are Republicans. They're like, fuck it. We're making a lot of money. These fucking accounts look fat. And we do not want anybody else in there. I'm starting to believe that. I'm starting to believe it's a Cointelpro operation where they just tell people, they go, hey, Joaquin Phoenix, why don't you get out there and talk about milk? It's almost like it was a sketch that was written out by like billionaire corporate donors that are like, you know what'll really get everybody? You just get out there and no, don't talk about immigration. That You could pull some heartstrings there. People might agree with you. Talk about uh, animals. Talk about factory farming when half the country is on heroin and there's a, a opioid epidemic and people are working three jobs to drag themselves out of bankruptcy because they got sick and can't afford the bills. Ignore all of that because that could that could get people on our side, on your side, and just talk about the abuse that cows suffer. I mean, what level of privilege do you have to be in society? To think that the biggest problem is fucking milk. I mean, how lost do you have to be as a human being to think that the real issue here, I'm not saying animals are always treated nicely. I'm saying this, we eat animals. That's how most people survive. They eat animals. They've been doing it forever, okay? Now, some people don't eat animals. They eat vegetables. Good for them. Some people abstain from animal products. But can we all stop with this insane crusade to end the consumption of meat and dairy as if it's the biggest problem in the country? This is a carcass of an empire. This is a scam that stopped being viable 50 years ago, this country, by the way. I mean, I look at these elections as like that there's somehow people that are still in the Enron office building arguing about what the lunch counter, you know, what the deli is going to serve. We're done, folks. And we're talking about milk, this psychopath. And these people, they look weirder and weirder, the celebrity. Like, they look odd when you see them on the red carpet. They look, you know, Saucy Ronan. They have a look to them where they, they look less and less like people. Timothy Chalamet does not look like a person. He looks like a feather. He floats around. He's this weirdly... You know, genderless, uh, you know, attractive, uh, but weirdly youthful, uh, like a guy who's kind of cast in amber that he's never really going to age. And, you know, all of these celebrities are starting to take on this look, which is strange to people. People don't quite understand it. The outfits are odd. 
the way of speaking is odd. The, the patterns of speech are odd. They're just not on planet Earth anymore. They come, they, it looks like spaceships are landing and they come in from their other planets to discuss things that we should be doing. It really is strange. People don't know what to make of this. People in middle America don't understand. People in, in on the coasts don't understand this stuff anymore. It's creepy to them. There's a level of, and I remember growing up watching the Academy Awards, watching the Emmys, people being into it, people kind of caring, people uh, thinking that there were stakes and that these things mattered. And then something happened where it just became like odd. These celebrities are much odder. And Andrew Schultz made this point that if you don't have social media now and if you're not accessible in any real way and you just live in some castle, you just live in some big house and everything you say is, is handed to you from a publicist or a lawyer, you seem odd now. Like a lot of these people, are, they're no longer relatable in any way to us. They're not. Because most people have adapted and they're like, I have these tools to communicate directly with fans. And then you have this really elite sanctum of Hollywood, this really elite group of people. They don't speak ever unless they're at a red carpet or they're, you know, it's a very staged production where they go on Jimmy Fallon or they go on Seth Meyers and they sit in the chair and they have five minutes of banter. And it's like, well, hey, I, you were in Italy recently. And there's nothing real about it. You know, you were in Italy. You know, I was in Italy when you were in Italy. You love when they do that. When somebody will be like, remember, remember when we were both in Italy? It's, it's so insane that this even still goes on. And the lead in to these shows is like, you know, a mass shooting or, you know, a senator who's been found to be taking a bribe or some scientist at Harvard who got caught sneaking biological samples to the Wuhan province of China, which no one really talks about. And then then we we go to uh, Jimmy Fallon and Seth Meyers who want to talk to somebody about the time they were both in Italy. It's crazy. You got to look at some old late night shows where guys like James Baldwin, the famous black intellectual, will go out and talk about real shit. They'll talk about real stuff. But these late night shows, their their viewers are are falling. They're decreasing steadily. And they're terrified of upsetting anybody. They're terrified of losing a fat housewife from Galveston, Texas, who thinks it's fun that Jimmy Fallon plays with Muppets every night. And that he sings with the band and he does dances and he brings out the kid from Stranger Things and they play hopscotch or whatever the fuck they do. I mean, it's cr imagine watching this and having a real job. Imagine having a real job where like you're working in a factory and a guy next to you is like, I just got diagnosed with cancer. I don't know what to do. And you go home and you put on Jimmy Fallon and he's playing a game with Zac Efron or he's going to the Olive Garden with Post Malone. Like it's the so that's where these celebrities that's the only time that they ever communicate with people is on these like late night shows which are like a dystopian nightmare reality in which insanely wealthy people sit there and have meaningless convert like meaningless conversations beyond the pit now if I am asked to do panel and I have to say this <laughs> I do have to. I have to be clear about this. If I'm asked to do panel on one of these shows, I will. I don't think, I think I'm, I'm beyond where I should be doing stand-up in a five-minute set. So also my stand-up doesn't really work in five-minute little bits. It, it, and I don't, I can't do it if I can't say what I want to say. And I, you know, years ago we submitted to do stand-up on these late night shows and they go, it's too ranty and it's too dark. And I was like, you're right. You're right. And I'm good with that. Like I, I love my friends that do it. I love when Norman does it. I love when Sam Marill does it. I love when I watch people do it. I don't need to do it. I'm not bitter and angry. Everything's fine. Um, but if they want to talk to me on panel, um, I will do that. Now, here's what will also happen. <laughs> that episode won't air. <laughs> That's also going to happen because I am, it's not going to air. Because I will ask them what they're doing. Like, I will look at one of them as I'm sitting there and go, yeah. let me ask you a question. What are you doing? <laughs> like, what in God's name are you doing? Um, I, I mean, I know this pays well, but l I will just keep bringing up real shit. Mm -hmm. And there will be censor. Because you got to realize the people that go to these shows, like the people that attend. Imagine going to New York City, the greatest city in the world, in my opinion. Um... 
and 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 I'm right. But imagine, I mean, London's a goth nightmare. The food sucks. Shut up. Shanghai, that'll have its time. It's coming. Don't worry about it. You'll have the next century. Let me have the past one. Thank you. Imagine going to New York City with a group of your friends, group of your friends, the great restaurants, the great public spaces, all the things you can do, the museums, and having one of them go, I'd really like to watch a taping of The Tonight Show tonight. Imagine... Being on a trip with someone that said that and just the, the it, it would be like the, the just feeling in the pit of your stomach of a doctor saying positive to you. That's what it would feel like to me of a doctor telling you that you, you had AIDS, you know, not even AIDS, something even worse than that. Like just you have six months to live. We're sorry. Inoperable. The word taping of The Tonight Show to me is synonymous with the word inoperable, like be hearing it's inoperable. Because, if I mean, can you imagine hearing that from somebody like, I want to go to a taping of The Tonight Show tonight. Why? Why would you ever want to go see a thing that you can see on TV and you could watch it on TV and shouldn't? But what in God's name? You don't know who the guests are. They're all like, who knows who it's going to be? It's going to be exciting. We're going to see Jimmy's going to come out. Maybe he'll have a field piece where he goes to the Olive Garden with Post Malone or Cardi B and they can sit in the Olive Garden where people have worked 16 hours to make a living and, and they soak their feet every night because they swell because they're on them all day and they're taking amphetamines to just to just keep doing it and keep fucking answering the questions that fat tourists from Ohio have about penne a la vodka. They, they have to do that and they're all drugged up and they can barely have a cigarette break and when they do, they go outside and it's just a cacophony of New York City blaring horns and ambulance and they go back into the Olive Garden and then they have to hear from their manager that, well, you got to look good today because Jimmy's coming in with Post Malone. Now, I'm sure that there are some people that enjoy this that work in the Olive Garden because they're so broken. They've been so destroyed in every possible way that some of them might get excited. Maybe they're young kids, but there's got to be a guy that considers having a Travis Bickle moment. There's got to be, there's got to be a guy that thinks of throwing a tour of Italy on the table and then lunging at Fallon. There's got to be one of those chefs in the back that's had quite enough of this shit. What is the bit that the Olive Garden's good? It ain't. That's the bit that rich people do. Let's go eat this, uh, uh, shit that regular people eat and pretend it's good. Oh, it's kind of good. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not good. It's disgusting. And everybody who eats there hates everything you believe in or say you believe in, Jimmy Fallon. You know? It's a repulsive restaurant. It is repulsive. The Olive Garden is, there's no quality about it in New York City. You could get anything they serve. They're better in a pizzeria. And they go to the Olive Garden. And I guess the joke is like, we're taking Cardi B to Red Lobster. We're going to teach her how to use silverware. I don't know what the joke is. And she's like, what's shrimp's cocktail? And you have to explain it. <laughs> what is the bit? I've, I'm lost on the bit. I'm really, truly lost on the bit. But imagine someone suggesting... So this is why these celebrities and the people that, that rise to that level are so insanely disconnected because they're only showcased to us on that show or on a show like The View where they go out and it's just five women screaming about politics and then a celebrity comes on to promote some movie of the week that they're doing, you know? I mean, it's, 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 it's truly crazy. I want to hear a podcast from these people. Where's Margot Robbie's podcast? I want to hear Emma Stone's podcast. You know? Emma's having panic attacks. She's It's de debilitating panic attacks that she's suffering. I feel bad for her. I don't like anxiety. But maybe you're too rich and you're too white and you're too pretty. And you're too successful. <laughs> but it doesn't fill the hole. Tim, it doesn't fill the hole. When you get all that money and success, it doesn't fill the hole. You're actually more upset. Good. Suffer in silence. Shut up about it. Shut up then. I understand that. I understand that it doesn't fill the hole. I do things all the time to fill a hole and they don't. I get it. But just enough already. We don't need a, a whole story about this. You have Joaquin Phoenix talking about animals. Yeah, we should. Can you get his speech up? This is the craziest thing. It makes you want to like just be vapid, wealthy people. That's what we want. We want to worship you. We want you to be pretty. We want you to be uh, 
you know, lucky. We want to believe those things can happen to us. We don't want to, you, we don't want to be moralized. You don't need to come in here and tell us everything that we're doing wrong. But it's part of the problem. Part of the real issue with I think a lot of these celebrities is they just don't, there's no place for them to be human beings because all of their, 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 their people are terrified. They might say something that'll lose them a deal. They can't be the spokesman for that face cream if they say something untoward. Now, if I was working on the red carpet, I would turn around to Sorcy Ronan and I would go, Sorcy, a lot of people don't know this, but you're a huge fan of Donald Trump. <laughs> you're, you're a massive fan of Donald Trump and you actually campaigned behind the scenes for Brexit. Is that not true, Sorcy? You, <laughs> Sorcy, you're from Ireland, a country where people shit in the street. Don't you think... Don't you think even if we're just, to protect immigrants, you shouldn't let them in there? Okay. Country where people have a 70 IQ, Ireland, where my family comes from. The goddamn Irish, the damned. Where do you have his speech? Yeah. You want the transcript or you want the audio? Read some of the transcript for okay. us. I'll start at the beginning. God, I'm full of so much gratitude right now. And I do not feel elevated above any of my fellow nominees or anyone in this room because we share the same love, the love of film. Lie. I mean, it's a lie. I just won a thing. I don't feel elevated. How not? You won. This is, this is <laughs> the problem. People can tell these people are full of shit immediately. Yeah. I don't feel elevated. No, the people that aren't elevated are in their seats. You've been elevated. You don't, it doesn't matter how you feel. It's again, the feeling stuff. And this form of expression has given me the most extraordinary life. I don't know what I'd be without it. But I, I know. I've got a pretty good idea of what you'd be. You'd be in a bar, you know, somewhere getting hammered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have a good idea, Joaquin, of where you'd be. But Nothing I, good. <laughs> but I think the greatest gift that has given me... Oh, I think the greatest gift that it's given me and many of us in this room is the opportunity to use our voice for the voiceless. Right. Yeah. And, and we say who they are and we choose who are the voiceless. How great is that? How great is calling large swaths of the American public voiceless? They have voices. They're using them all the time on things. You, then you shut them down on social media. They use their voice and you go, you're a Nazi and you take their account away half the time. A voice for the voiceless. Who are these voiceless people? All I'm inundated with all day is people's voices. <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, everybody, nobody shuts the fuck up. <laughs> There's nobody in this country without a voice unless they literally don't have a voice. Unless they literally had their throat removed with cancer. There's nobody that doesn't have a voice. In fact, I think people's voices are a little too loud. <laughs> the voiceless. That shit might have worked 10 years ago. There's no one who's voiceless anymore. Bill Cosby's tweeting from a prison cell at Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Who is voice? And I mean, and I know that he's using it as like, you know, an expression to mean people that don't have the political power and economic power that he does. But words mean things. And when you start saying that people are voiceless and that you need to speak for these voiceless people, again, you've set up this entire thing that's wrong. It's completely wrong. You go, I, I. I am here to speak for the voiceless. Who appointed you to speak for the voiceless? Because you won a trophy? Because you pretended to be the Joker? Why, in God, why isn't it a scientist who speaks for the voiceless? Or a doctor? Or a philosopher? Why in God's name is it you? Who, who made you the, the fucking standard bearer? Keep going. I've been thinking a lot about some of the distressing issues that we are facing collectively. Oh, good. That's when you're watching and you're like, oh, good. I think at times we feel or we're made to here's feel. How much, here's how good he was at Joker. This is how good of an actor he is. I know that's not true. I know that you're not spending a ton of time thinking about these issues because you did a phenomenal job in that fucking movie. And you can. You know, Serena Williams and Venus, you just can't spend a, like, Serena Williams is not sitting around thinking about trade. It's not happening. I'm telling you right now. Venus Williams, wh whichever one's still relevant. Fuck off. I don't care. <laughs> it, no, it's the other one. Shut up. They're both fine. The point is this. I'll beat both of them. I was at, uh, my grandfather used to, I used to play tennis uh, in Muttontown, Long Island. Perhaps you've heard of it. He had a tennis court on his property. Okay. And I would play tennis too. Okay. In a, in a classy way. 
I think at times we feel, or we're made to feel, that we champion different causes. But for me, I see commonality. I think whether we're talking about gender inequality or racism or queer rights or indigenous rights or animal rights, we're talking about the fight against injustice. We're talking about the fight against the belief that one nation, one people, one race, one gender, or one species one has direction. the right to dominate, control, and use and exploit another with impunity. I think we've become very disconnected from the natural world, and many of us, what yeah. we're guilty of— Hey, Joaquin, guess who's, guess who's suspect number one? who's been a little disconnected from the natural world. Now he's going to talk, by the way, this flows in. This is what I love. The disconnected from the natural world will now flow into how no one's supposed to eat animals. Mm. What have you ever seen? Uh, have you watched any nature documentary ever, any show ever on nature? Nobody in the natural world is handing each other trophies. There's no bear getting up at a podium and going, I am a voice for the voiceless. <laughs> I am here to give a voice for the, like, what are you even saying? The, the beginning of that is all like, you know, Bard College, which is the Columbia School for Women. And I'm not saying that it's because they're women, but Bard College freshman year paper that was handed to him before he got on stage. Continue. We go There's many great women that are very smart in this country, by the way. I'm going to name five. Barbara Bush. Because she knew her husband was involved in the JFK assassination, she helped cover it up. I will tell you why. That's great. It's, it's a great thing. She's a very smart woman. Uh, Tana Mongo Mogo. Mm. She's an Instagram influencer from Las Vegas who married Jake Paul in a fake wedding. And I'm a fan of her. I don't know why, but I stand her. I don't know why I like her. She's got the big tits, the fake face, the fake lips. But there's something about her I like. There's something I, I like people that come out of Vegas. Mm. It just seems like everyone born in Vegas should die. So when someone makes it out of Vegas, I like it. And I like that she's selling us lip gloss and big tits. That's what we get. So I like her. So Barbara Bush, Tana. Um, I don't know anyone else now. And I can't, I can't do the whole episode. I can't, I can't, it's going to take me 40 minutes to think I about it. I thought you were going to say Michelle Carter. At some point. No, because Michelle Carter just got lucky. Yeah. She just got lucky. She was a devious bitch who told her boyfriend to get back into that car. And after that documentary, I was over him, but I was, I was over her, but I was over him. I'm over him. It's another good looking guy who's like, I do not want to die. And then she's like, die, die. I'm over him. I'm over his family. I'm over HBO <laughs> giving documentaries to this horse shit when some white kid gets killed. Shut the fuck up. I, I mean, enough already. There's black people getting shot in the CVS. Give them a documentary. <laughs> Who cares? I'm sick of this shit. It's a small town. It's a small... Everything on Netflix and HBO is about a small town that's being eaten alive by something. Well, let it get eaten then. Enough. I'm sick of this shit. Michelle okay. Carter. Where's my fucking special? You got specials on HBO where the trailer's like, I don't do stand-up. I just like driving around in a car. Yeah. Ugh. Go on. What we're guilty of is an egocentric worldview, the belief that we're the center of the universe. We go into the natural world and we plunder it for its resources. We feel entitled to artificially inseminate a cow, and when she gives birth, we steal her baby. How are the people, how are the people in the developing world going to eat? Joaquin, without some fusion of science and agriculture, how are people in the third world going to eat, dummy? They can Postmates vegan avocado toast to their house, like you probably do, and some terrified open mic comedian has to go past your gate and, and, and hand you something? Okay. Bernie Sanders should execute all of these people, and I will support him. Everyone knows that I'm a Tom Steyer guy. I stand Steyer. Steyer, is, uh, Steyer is, is the candidate to win, and I only say that because I don't know who he is. And I won't know. I won't know who Steyer is until I write his name in on the ballot in 2020. But if Bernie said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to reign in Wall Street. We're going to take all the CEOs out and shoot them in the face, and then we're going to go to Hollywood and we're going to shoot them in the face. <laughs> And, and then we're going to give Tim Dillon a show on HBO <laughs> and not some con to convince your boyfriend to kill himself because Tim Dillon's actually talented. Stop giving murderers all the airtime. Can we stop giving murderers all the airtime in this country now? You got to murder someone in a small town to get a show now. 
I'm sorry I didn't kill someone in a small American town. You know what I mean? Stephen Avery's had nine seasons of a show because he's, he raped and murdered people in a town, you know, in a salvage yard. So he gets a show. But I can't get a show because I haven't done that. I haven't slit someone's throat with a carburetor in Wisconsin. I apologize. Because everyone wants to sit around and watch murder all day in a small town where people go, oh, you know, I'm so down and earthy and oh, it's just shook up the whole town. Continue. I apologize. And when she gives birth, we still her baby, even though her cries of anguish are unmistakable. Then we take her milk. These people are all for late term abortion. They're all for late term abortion. They're like, we stole the cow's baby. You, you don't mind if women take their baby and throw it out of the window at Cedar sinai <laughs> because it gets in the way of the, a book that they're writing. Again, no consistency here. I would love, I would love if he got up on stage, grabbed the trophy and went, I love death. Thank you. And just walked <laughs> off stage. I would clap and I'd go, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Consistency. I stand Steyer. Steyer stand. Then we take her milk. That's intended Are for you a in? Calf. That's Tom Steyer's <laughs> logo. Are you in? It's like a bunch of seventh graders about to vandalize their gym, having a powwow. Are you in? It's literally the stupidest logo I've ever had. But he's for structural reform, which isn't real and doesn't. It's just a coupling of words I've always found hilarious. Structural reform. Oh, so we're going to we'll also reform the structure of it. Good. Keep going. I apologize. Then we take her milk that's intended for her calf and we put it in our coffee and our cereal. And I think we fear the idea of personal change because we think that we have to sacrifice something to give something up. But human beings at our best are so inventive and creative and ingenious. And I think that when we use love and compassion as our guiding principles, we can create, develop and implement systems of change that are beneficial to all sentient beings and the environment. Now I have been, I have been a scoundrel in my life. I've been selfish, I've been cruel at times, hard to work with, and I'm grateful that so but many- now, But now that's all over, that I'm a millionaire. My selfish ways are done now that I have all the money in the world. Right. Now that I've done amassing money with the selfishness, I've decided to be a great person. Chelsea Handler buys a house in Bel Air, calling uh, that, that, uh, that uh, tiny Mexican guy on her show a nugget for five years, and then decides that you know she's Malcolm X when she has a house in Bel Air. It's nobody on the journey decides. Nobody has these revelations when they're broke, by the way. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Nobody has any of these revelations until they have a lot of money. Yeah, there's something about sitting in a pool every day and watching Netflix documentaries about murder that makes you feel pretty damn lucky. These people go, I'm pretty lucky. I don't live in Ferguson, Missouri. I'm pretty lucky. And then they, they start telling everybody what to do. And they start criticizing like... You know, oh, you know, we steal the baby from the cow. We steal her baby. It's it's the most insane. We don't want to give up milk and our cereal. I've been a scoundrel. I'm grateful that so many of you in this room have given me a second chance. And I think that's when we're at our best, when we support each other. And give me, a, that's when we're at our best. We support me. We give me another chance. Because I've been horrible and abusive to people mm -hmm. on sets and I'm a dick. But I also am a genius. He's an amazing actor. So when I treat people like shit because I'm talented, which fine, there's some trade off there. Uh, I, you know, I'm very happy. We're at our best when we forget about the scoundrel that I've been for my entire life and career. We're at our best. That's when we're all at our best. <sighs> When we support each other, not when we cancel each other out for past mistakes, but when we help each other to right, grow. Right, and you know what that means. Hey, don't dig too deep on oh, Joaquin. <laughs> don't dig too deep on Joaquin. I'm, I'm saying no more milk. I'm, I'm on the thing. I'm, I've been handed bullet points by a freshman at Columbia University to read here at the Oscars. Don't go looking back for the many moments where I was a scoundrel. Let's no, none of the canceling. Let's start the process of giving me more work and money because that's when we're at our best. Mm -hmm. But when we help each other to grow, when we educate each other, when we guide each other toward redemption, that is the best of humanity. When he was 17, my brother wrote this lyric. He said, run to the rescue with love and peace will follow. Man, did the wrong brother bite it? Did the wrong brother check out, huh?
I'd love to have River back. <laughs> He'd probably be saying the same shit, but I don't know, at least more poetically. I'm sorry. I mean, just enough already with these people. It's really, it's, 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 it's incredulous. Like you watch it and it's, it's not even funny anymore because they're so disconnected. Like there was a period of time when it was funny when like Sean Penn would bring up like a Native American to accept the award from and they would start yelling about something. It was kind of funny because you're like, yeah, these people were fucked over. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen now, but this is at least something. Now these people are just, you know, so he ended it with his brother's lyric. Mm -hmm. How sweet. How sweet. We got to, we got to rap and then we'll be back. All right. All right, everybody, we are back now. We had to interrupt the show. I had to do three stand-up comedy spots, two at the Improv and one at the Comedy Store, and then we had to go to Mel's Drive-In and get uh, two wellness shots and a uh, waffle sundae. I had a little bit of my cayenne pepper and ginger wellness shot. It was not good, so I opted to not be well. Ben took his down. He likes spice. He's a Texas boy. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that was, but it was not for me, that wellness shot. I was very angry earlier about the Oscars, and I, I, I'm i right about everything I'm saying, but, you know, we're calmer now. We've all had our food. Everybody <laughs> is. We understand that, you know, people deal with all kinds of things. Um, there are people that are not trusting the process with my new business venture, which kind of is upsetting me. Um, many people know that I'm a comedian. That's, we've kind of established that already, but what people don't know is that's not my real, my real passion. My real passion has always been jewelry. And I've seen the look on someone's face when you give them something that is special and unique. And to me, what that is, is a perfectly set stone, perfectly set stone. It could be topaz, could be one of the other ones. And jewelry has been my passion. Now, a lot of people are like, they're not the, the, we have a mail order jewelry business called Jewels by Podcaster Tim Dillon. A lot of people have given us a lot of money and are now getting angry at us because the jewels haven't showed up at their home for them to sell. Now, this is the type of amateur bullshit that I expect from some of these people. This is amateur hour, okay? Number one, you, you don't need the physical jewels to sell. You can get out there and you're selling a lifestyle, you're selling an idea. You're selling uh, an identity. So you're going to get the jewels. They're coming. But I, I fear for many of you because the complaints are, are so unnecessary. And I just feel like a lot of you aren't taking it seriously. You have one job when you sell jewels by podcaster Tim Dillon. To, you have to convince people that they are not happy because they don't have the right jewelry. And you also have to convince them that they need to sell jewelry for me and you and this whole, co I'm trying to start a company here and a lot of people don't take me seriously. I'm trying to start a goddamn company, an operation. And I just feel like a lot of you are ungrateful because many of you have no idea how to be an entrepreneur. And I am a businessman. That's what I've been since I'm a little baby boy. I've been a business boy forever in my whole life. All of my existence has been business. Crunching numbers, chopping the onions, making it work, fitting a square peg into a round whatever. The point is, I don't need your fucking ungrateful mouth. Oh, the kid isn't here. The jewel kit's not here. Improvise, you stupid bitch. Figure it out. It's going to get there. It's on its fucking way. You're going to get it. Also, we're, we're, we're coming up with the sales strategy because I, I realize that many of you need much more help than I had anticipated, which is okay. I want to give you that help. But many of you are not salespeople. You're not closers. I can hear it in your voices. Uh, I can hear it in your emails that are very, uh, that are rage filled. When you send me an email and you're like, I spent all this money, I, didn't, I haven't been given any guidance or any help, I don't even have the jewels, where are the jewels, I'm telling everyone I'm selling jewelry for you and I can't even do it. You know, all I hear is failure. And I don't know, is that who you are? Is that who you want to be? 
that's not who I want to be. That's not what I am. So we're we're doing a, a seminar in in an Arizona Hilton or Marriott. We're going to see. And it's going to be three days. It's going to be a three-day intensive sales training seminar. We're going to train you on the product. You got to get trained on the product. Then you got to get trained on the strategy. And then once you have the product and the strategy, you're good to fucking go. Okay? Product plus the strategy, sales strategy. Okay? Now I'm going to show you. This is an example and again, you're not going to be at the level I'm at for a very long time, maybe never. But if you listen to me, I've invited Ben to lunch. Ben is someone I have not seen in a very long time. I've invited him to lunch by messaging him on Facebook. We do a lot of our ads uh, on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Stay away from Twitter. Stay away from Instagram. Stay away from, God forbid, TikTok. Stay on Facebook. What I like about Facebook is that Zuckerberg, they're not, cra they're not trying to verify everything on there, they're just letting it fly, which I think is very important for a, a small business that she's starting. So I messaged Ben and I want to get lunch with him. Now I don't bring up Jules by podcaster, Tim Dillon in the message. I just reconnect with him authentically. And he agrees to have lunch with me at the local diner. Now we've done some of our bullshitting and now it's the time when I'm going to pounce. The word is pounce like a puma would, like a big cat. Have you ever seen a big cat fuck something up with his paw? Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing, but we're helping people. <laughs> Do you understand that? I'm helping him, but because he is so lost, I need to, to paw him like a large cat would mm -hmm. to help him. Now, so this is the time when I'm going to do it. Ha, huh. this lunch has been very good. I've enjoyed it. It was great. Yeah, it's very so good. It's very good. I enjoyed. I I like rye bread. Me too. It's it's wonderful. It's so nice to see you. I haven't seen you since high school. How's things? It's pretty good. You know, I, things could be better though. Not gonna lie. Well, let me tell you a story. Do you want to hear a story? You have time for a story. I I'd, I'd love to hear one. I have nothing to do. When I was a young child. I became obsessed with jewelry. Mm. I would steal it, I would wear it, and I would sell it. Mm -hmm. And even though looking back on that now, that seems immoral, mm -hmm. what it did was give me a real understanding of the market, the market for jewels. I have an opportunity for you. I have a company right now that I haven't told anybody about because I'm still trying to decide who's worthy about knowing about it. It's called Jewels by Podcaster Tim Dillon. Now, I see your face, and you're surprised, and you're shocked, and I think maybe you feel a little lucky. <laughs> Do you feel, you seem to feel a little lucky. You're not wrong to be lucky. What I want you to do is I want you to go into your community. I want you to go to your family, your friends, people who trust you, people who you've built rapport with over your entire life and sell them jewelry <laughs> that I have provided for you to sell them. I get my jewelry from the best jeweler. Mm. I won't tell you where, Okay. but have you seen the movie Uncut Gems? Yeah. Him. <laughs> There's nothing like the look on someone's face when you, when you marry them to a perfectly set stone. Many people aren't happy in their life. They're fat and they're on heroin. And the reason that this is the case is because God is dead and the country is shit now. Even though it's kind of good, it's still shit. But one thing that always glitters brightly is a jewel. And everybody wants it. That's why, do you, do you remember... Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs? Yeah. What were the dwarfs doing? They were mining for little jewels. That is the oldest story in America. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Really? Yes. So in the beginning, there were jewels. There will always be jewels. And when you... You have to make people understand how lucky they are to be in the unique position 
of being sold jewelry over the phone or in person at their house. Because you say, you could take a trip. Mrs. Miller, when I go into a sale, I go, hello, Mrs. Miller. You could go anywhere and buy jewelry, but you're not buying it from a trusted name and you're not buying it for, from somebody that has a passion. So what are you really doing? You're being stupid. And if you're stupid, you're going to fail. But I don't fail, I win. Because I'm not stupid, I'm smart. My jewels are bright. They shine. Remember the rap song, Shine Like the Diamond? Shine bright like a diamond. Shine bright like a diamond. That's not the way it goes, but I like the way I'm doing it a little better. <laughs> shine bright like a diamond. The best thing about these jewels is I'm not only selling them to you, I'm selling them to you so that you can sell them to other people. Mm, so you're trying to help me. I want to help you. I want to help you create a revenue stream. I don't want you to have to get up and work a nine to five job like some dumb pig. <laughs> I want you to be able to create your own business and your own opportunities. I want you to have multiple revenue streams. I want you to have a sales strategy that works for you. I want you to put your tentacles into the community and, and choke people very softly so that they understand that Jewels by podcaster Tim Dillon is the fucking thing that is going to be the thing that's going to happen. Another thing I want to touch on is uh, that Aaron Hernandez doc was so stupid and people in this country are so incredibly stupid that when everyone was like, it's mind blowing, you have to watch it. It's so mind blowing. The people in the documentary are so dumb. Aaron Hernandez, of course, is the, the, the guy is a closeted gay guy who kills the guy or whatever. You, you know how it is. And everybody was like, uh, in the documentary, they're like, how could he do it? How could he, he killed someone and then he goes and plays football? It's like, he, hey, idiot. Athletes kill people. We know this. None of it's fascinating. We know this. They kill people. They beat people. They beat their wives. I can't believe he's had it all in front of him. I can't believe he do this. Yeah, rich people kill people all the time. How is this shocking? When you hear that that's mind-blowing and then you watch the documentary, you realize how fucked we are as a country. We don't learn any lessons here. We're like goldfish in this country. We have no memory. We cannot retain any piece of information. We start at zero every fucking day here. I can't believe you watch that documentary. All these people are like, it doesn't make any sense. He's successful and rich and he just kills somebody. How does it happen? And then he goes and plays football like it didn't happen. Yeah. Yeah, that's what people do. I don't understand what's shocking about it. It's just so sad. What, what election? I mean, there's 20,000 arenas. 20,000 seat arena is being filled up so people can watch puppet shows. What election, folks, is going to help here? I mean, I'm trying to, I mean, I don't understand. There's 20,000 people that file in an arena to see two puppets argue with each other. I'm not throwing, you know, whatever. You can fill in who the comic is. They're, they're making a lot of money, a lot more than me. But when you see 20,000 people laughing hysterically at a puppet, what what do you think it's <laughs> going to look like here? What country do you think we're living in? Are you aware of where we are and who's in the little houses and in the cars? Oh, I mean, they want to look at puppets. They want to listen to puppets argue with each other. Puppet shows are what I liked when I was three. When I was three years old, I thought puppet shows were fun. Because there was a little thing at my school. It was a puppet theater. And the little puppet came up out of the little theater. And they had a fun show. I got over that by three and a half. I was done with it. I said, I don't like puppet shows anymore. Because I bought puppets. Your parents would get you puppets. This is what happens. This is the natural reaction if you're not, if your mind has not been completely like shattered. 
you get the puppet, you buy the puppets, you play with the puppets for a few hours. You go, oh, this kind of sucks. I get it. It's a puppet. And then you're done. And then you move on. But there are large swaths <laughs> of the population, millions and millions of people who still enjoy a puppet. <laughs> I mean, so... I mean, I'm not trying to say, I don't want to be better than people. I don't want to be that guy. But at, at a certain point, when everybody's like your politics and you have all these people are doing uh, debates, uh, we're going to structurally reform the, what? They're watching puppet shows. <laughs> How this country doesn't have a dictator already is amazing. I'm amazed. That we don't have a dictator already <laughs> with what people, where, where people are mentally in this country. People are mentally broken in this country. Their minds are broken. It, they've been polluted with sugar and fat and drugs and booze and cheap entertainment. And they like puppet shows. You gonna talk to him about climate change? Have the puppet do it. I mean, I mean, have a puppet moderate the debate. It, folks, I don't know what you think is gonna happen. Good, listen, Bernie, Trump, good, whatever. Bernie's got great points. I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of people having health insurance. I really am. I know some people of you are upset at me about that. I also, on the other flip side, don't know if he'll be able to get it done. I know where, where we're living, you know? I know in order to get anything done in this country, he's got to go into the woods and convince a bunch of people in hoods in the middle of the forest it's a good idea. You know? He's got to convince a bunch of people barbecuing human beings, <laughs> you know, that it's a good idea that we keep pre-existing conditions in. And I know that can be challenging. But I also am deeply skeptical of the ability for change because I'm, I've met people and I've spoken to the people. And I just don't know, you know, what, you know. I mean, I remember I was, I was in rehab with a kid. I've talked about this before. I, we got out of rehab. And he invited me to his girlfriend's house or his house. His girlfriend was there. And he wanted to watch a Jeff Dunham special. Now, I, I think Jeff is talented. I've never met Jeff. You know, all the disclaimers that whatever, you know, who cares? I'm fucking Jeff Dunham, like, well, I'm going to go on the road with Jeff Dunham. I, I, I'm going to open up. I dress up like a big puppet. Talk about Disney kidnapping your kids. I don't think that's going to fly. But I'll give all the disclaimers. You know, Jeff's great. He's got a lot of money. He's talented. Whatever. God love him. God, God, you know, hey, ha, boo, ba, boo. They wanted me to watch a Jeff Dunham special, and they said, our favorite puppet is Peanut. And I said, what? Because I didn't really know. I knew Jeff was a ventriloquist, but I, I didn't know, like, I didn't know people got that invested in the puppet. I thought it was maybe, like, dirty puppet shit, like dark puppet. You could have fun with puppets, right? I guess. I don't know. But when I, I went to this house and I watched it with them and I watched how excited they were getting and they're going, and when Jeff brought out Peanut, they went nuts. They started clapping on the couch. I said, you, I looked at this kid and I went, you should do heroin. Like you should go back to doing drugs. That was probably a better life for you than sitting here and having your mind numbed and they just laughed so hard at this puppet. And I realized that for most people, life, like for most people, for a lot of human beings out there, I don't know how many people, let's just say far too many. Okay. For far too many people, life is a bowel movement. You know, it, it's just a, like they they don't have they just are existing on earth and they don't think too much about anything going on around them they don't have the mental faculty to comprehend what is going on they do not understand what is happening 
And then the people that do have those mental faculties and do understand what's happening tend to poison everyone else. And the reason for that is because they meet them. Like the Bushes and the Clintons, they meet all the people. They go shake their hands. They do all these events and they go, yeah, they're watching puppet shows. So why not kill people, poison people, start wars? Mm -hmm. You know, these people are watching Peanut. I, I mean, so, I mean, I'm not trying to say that we don't have a lot of bright people here. But the average American, like the average American, and this is why I could never run for anything, that in my past and present and future. <laughs> but the reason I could never run for anything is because I go, the average American is the problem. Like the average American who wants to watch the puppet show and and just, and just like... They just, I mean, you look at the people that are on a cruise ship and they just want to eat and just float. They just want to eat and fart and float. That's what a cruise is. It's a bunch of disgusting people that want to just sit on a boat and watch garbage comedians, garbage music, garbage entertainment, stuff their faces with food, pull into some port. Go buy a knick-knack. Go home and put it on your refrigerator. Okay? And then go watch a puppet show. I mean... Give them free college. They're not going to go. They won't go. What are you going to do? Force them to go with a gun to their head? You can put the military, you're going to drive them in trucks. Give them, free, give them everything. Cancel the student debt. Cancel it. Do what you want. I, you know. People, they don't want enough. People just talk. They don't care. They, they don't. They don't even know why they're, no one knows why they're on earth. So like the idea that most people are going to try to waste any time figuring out anything, they just go, Ugh. they shrug. They just want to feel things. Their minds are dislocated from their bodies. They're impressed by light shows. You know, you go to Vegas, you sit down in a restaurant, they got light shows because everybody, yeah, yeah. You know, I went down to a restaurant in Vegas. There was a frog singing, and it's like, there's something fun about it because you're in Vegas. But, like, this is what people want. They want the puppets. That's why politics is a puppet show. They're all puppets. People are like, why are all our politicians puppets? It's like, because you like actual puppets. <laughs> you like actual puppets. So why wouldn't the politicians be puppets? I, I mean, I... <laughs> Fast cars. We like to see cars drive fast. You go fast. Your car go fast. Like to see people beat the shit out of each other. You know, that's it. It's what it is. We just, you don't want to see porn where people are beaten within an inch of their life. Strangled, choked, defecated on. You can't come unless blood's being drawn. <laughs> You know, I, I mean, this is what people are doing out there. They're eating cinnamon roll pancakes at Denny's or 1,900 calories. I get it. They're eating salted caramel banana cream pancakes. That doesn't even sound good. Serve with a pitcher. I mean, Ben read it on the Patreon episode. Serve with a pitcher of caramel. Pitcher. Not a side, a picture of it you could drown your pancakes in caramel and then go see the puppets <laughs> you know people tell you proudly in America reading's not for them they go reading's not for me proudly Long Island's famous for that Long Island is the only place people take a an intense pride in their ignorance it might not be the only place but it, it's one of them 
They just laugh in your face and go, I don't know anything about that. Like if you start saying something intelligent, they'll laugh at you. They'll be like, uh, I don't know anything about that. Ah." Big smile on their face because they think they've won and they have. They've won. They've won because they don't know. And then one day, you know, it all, the lights just go black anyway. It just all goes black. The end, produced by Dick Wolf. It's all over. You know? So it's not that I'm like politically, I I, I think Sanders is really interesting. I thought Trump was going to be interesting. I I think Trump's somewhat less interesting than I think. I think the response to Trump is interesting because these fucking psychopaths on the other side cannot effectively counter him at all. And it just proves that they're as, as wantonly, the Democratic Party is as wantonly corrupt as anything. Um, and they're trying to steal it from Bernie and they're trying to give it to Buttigieg because he works for the CIA or, or, or whether he knows it or not. And he probably does. It's just what it is. OK. Um, and watching this in real time, watching the biggest human trafficking case with uh, huge political I- implications, um, watching that completely go away and get, get out of the news cycle is fucking fascinating. Uh, watching this guy get killed, watching that all be covered up. Watching them try to steal the election from Bernie in fucking real time. I don't care if you like Bernie or not. What's happening right now is fucking historic. You're watching the ruling class of this country losing power and trying, scratching desperately any way they can to rest and put power back in the control of the billionaire cartels of Wall Street, Hollywood, big tech, big pharma, all of these fucking things. These elite you know, organs of opinion, whether it's the Washington Post or MSNBC or the New York Times, they're all trying to diminish Bernie's accomplishments. They did it with Trump. They've been doing it, you know, as soon as Trump got elected, there was a coordinated attack on him from every which way. Not to say some of it wasn't justified. He's a shady guy, but it was over the top. These things are kind of invented. This collusion Russia narrative never played out. And the amount of the amount that it was hyped. You said that the president was an agent of a foreign power for two years and then turned around and went, oops, I guess we were wrong. It, it's absurd. And they're doing the same thing to Bernie in the primaries. You have to realize that. They're doing the exact same thing. They're throwing everything they can at him. Whether you fucking think his economic policies are reasonable or not. Understand the moment historically that you're living in. Many of you do not grasp it yet because things are still good. There's still Waffle Sundays and puppet shows. I don't know that that'll be around forever. And I know that when there's still Waffle Sundays and puppet shows, I like the former. (laughs) Many of you like the latter. (laughs) But because there's still Waffle Sundays and puppet shows, nobody has fully taken time to appreciate the time and place in history you are in now where you're seeing the cracks of a civilization become too big to hide and the fractures are becoming too deep and too meaningful to ignore. And it's the national security state, it's big money players, and the people in this country are turning on the government. They are turning on the established order. They have been fed a diet of bullshit and lies for a very long fucking time. We've seen horrible abuses of women, children, human rights abuses, all of this shit coming to head in the last 24 to 48 months. And people are flipping the fuck out. People's minds have melted. The QAnon cult is people that really can't handle how much real shit is fucked up. So they've kind of invented this subterranean war that Trump is having with these deep state people. And he's going to you know, bring justice to all of these people and whatever, all these people that they think are involved. And, you know, uh, and there's no real proof for that. There's no evidence for that other than conjecture. And, and that's not to say that there aren't slimy, shady people in Hollywood and Washington. We, I've talked about that as much as anyone on this fucking planet. I mean, maybe not as much as anyone on the planet because I want to have a little fun and laugh a little bit too. I just can't fucking talk about that every fucking minute. 
But, you know, we get how fucked it is. And I get the, the, you know, people wanting there to be this war happening. I've never I've never not wanted it to happen. I hope it is happening. I just haven't seen any evidence of it. And if I don't see any evidence of something, then I turn into Rachel Maddow sputtering on about Russian bots and Putin like a lunatic. And I refuse to let my mind be melted, even though it's a mind melting time. It's a mind melting time. Trump is the president. You know, that's wild in and of itself. Alex Jones is one guy in Austin, Texas that had a news, you know, organization. One guy that became so threatening, rightly or wrongly, whatever you want to say. And all the tech companies kind of got together and deplatformed him and took all of his, but you know, he was kind of unpersoned, whatever you want to say, disappeared. And it's a crazy time that you have one person with that reach that becomes that much of a threat to whoever that they got to, you know, take quick action to get rid of him. And you might agree. You might go, Hey, he's fucked up things. It's Andy Hook, blah, blah, blah. None of this is, we're not having moral arguments about all these things. What I'm, what I'm telling you is just sit back and think about how inconceivable any of this was even 10 years ago that these types of things were happening. Because again, this is the result of the, the, the independence of media. It's starting to become a real problem for people in power. It's becoming a real devastating trend for them. And they're going to have to do everything they can. And they're starting with apps and the app's not working or the app doesn't work. The app doesn't tabulate the votes. And then they report that Pete and Amy came in second and third and they barely mentioned that Bernie won. And then they'll tar him and feather him and say this about him and that about him. And they'll, you know, arrange it so, or hopefully... They won't, but they're going to try as hard as they can to get their boy in the White House, their gal, whoever, you know, same reason Trump, you know, dropped that big bomb in Syria as soon as he got in. He's playing the game. It's just what it is. The mother of all bombs, the Moab, you know, we're defeating ISIS. You know, if you still believe that, I got, you know, I I don't know what to tell you. (laughs) I got some jewels to sell you. I mean, ISIS and all these things that don't exist that we pretend and we make them up and we we trot them out when we need them. ISIS, to, you know, yeah, they're uh, it's, it's the Islamic State. They're horrible. They're terrorists. They're bad. They're bad boys and girls over there. We got to go set them straight. We got to go set them straight. And then we go do that. And then, you know, six months later, they're back again because... I guess they're the most powerful fighting force in the world because I thought we were, but somehow they evaded us or they went underground and they came back up. And it's like, you know, what a what a fun little whack-a-mole situation we've got going on there in the Middle East. And it'll truly never end. And Bernie's really not going to do much about it either because he's been he, he's talked about the military industrial complex and I respect that. But it's just how do you unwind that? You just don't, folks. You don't really unwind that. And you, you people out there that think you can unwind it, Understand that you can unwind it, but it's it's not going to be good. It's going to be bad. It's not, and I'm not saying don't do it because it's morally an imperative that we don't do. But understand the amount of money that these people are making. They're going to fight back. It's going to be a fight. And listen, you might win, you won't. But understand, it's going to be bad. They're going to do bad things. I'm not saying it's not a worthwhile endeavor, but understand what's happening. A lot of you have this pie in the sky view of things that you, things are just going to change peacefully and playfully and everyone's going to be like, all right, you now it's your turn. It's not going to happen. They're, they're, these people are not going to give up power without a tremendous fight. They're not going to give up the money. They're not going to give up control. And you're not 
taking it from them. It's not going to be violence in the street. It's not going to be Antifa. It's not going to be your black backpack and your hat and you're throwing an egg. It's uh, Gavin McGinnis. None of that matters to these people. They don't give a shit because they have the police and the military <laughs> and all the technology and all the money and all the resources and all the land and all the corporations and all the tech. And blah, 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 blah. What you have is Twitter. You have Twitter. You go, I don't like you. Now, if we have some massive demonstrations, some massive civil disobedience, if we have a guy like Bernie Sanders, maybe he's a transformational figure. Maybe he's not. I don't know. I'm skeptical about how anybody. But understand what this shit is, what it is at its core, who we are. Stop forgetting who we are. Ray, I was on the phone with Ray today. He brought up a great point. Who do these people think we are out there? You know, we got to get back to where, what? What? Get back. This country is a scam that ran out of steam about 50 years ago. It's been propped up by cheap credit and foreign wars. And it's going to fall. And it's going to be bad. Not immediately. And not, you know, but it's coming. It's coming. And those fat behemoths, no down deep it's coming. That's why they all file into the arena and watch the puppets. Because maybe they're smarter than us. Maybe they're actually the smart ones. Maybe they just want the raw fucking form of what this really is. Why dress it up with Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klondike Barr, whatever her name is? Why dress any of this shit up? Why not just go back to it in its original form? Furry puppets. Because that's what it is. Entertainment, bread and circus, spectacle. So maybe I'm the idiot that tries to make sense of it. And they're the people that just file in and watch the puppets. You know? Because those puppets are probably a hell of a lot funnier than Pete Buttigieg. <laughs> maybe they're not. As always, I leave this broadcast with a great hope for mankind. <laughs> We've got a bright future ahead in this country, and don't let anybody tell you we don't. Don't let anybody tell you we don't. Believe in yourselves and others. Invest in your communities. Invest in yourselves. Push yourselves to the limit. You are who you've been waiting for. Greta Thunberg is going to lead us all. It's all fine. It's all great. The water's going to not run, swell up, and everybody's going to be fine. Buy that little house by the coast. Doesn't matter. It's all good. Go on the date with that woman with fucking, you know, a, a fuck, that kleptomaniac who uh, has a Vicodin addiction. Don't worry about it. Nobody's perfect. Just bite it off. Bite off more that you can chew and choke it down. It's America, goddammit. Get your cinnamon roll pancakes and go watch the puppets. It doesn't matter. You're lucky to be here. You're lucky to be here at the end. And if you don't think it's the end, it, it might not be the end. But you're lucky to be here in the previews for the end. Because we're previewing the end. The previews are, we're watching the previews. We haven't started to watch the movie yet. That happens when the dollar is no longer the res world's reserve currency. That happens when the pandemics break out and the plagues, when coronavirus comes here, you know, because that's all that is. It's just, you know, Harvard scientists, you know, China's doing bio warfare and something slips out in the Wuhan province and blah, 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 you know, it is what it is. They're cooking up your death in a lab somewhere. They're cooking up your death in a lab and you're watching the puppets. And they'll put little masks on the puppets to make it fun. <laughs> when we're all in fucking hospital beds, they'll put little Corona masks on the puppets <laughs> for all of you. And you'll like it. You'll enjoy it. You'll love it. Because you're a big retard. <laughs> And oxygen, air, and water has been wasted on you. But that's no reason not to have a Ridge wallet. None at all. You need a wallet. You need a wallet. Ridge wallet is a front-facing wallet. It, that means it goes in your front pocket. Okay? Idiots. Goes in your front pocket. It's made out of what is it? Steel, Ben, carbon. Who gives? It's made out of some shit. It you ain't gonna. It ain't gonna go away. It's around forever. Unlike us, 
Ridge Wallet's good because you put a credit card, a debit card, a little cash, nothing major. You, you're forced to streamline your life. It's a great wallet. I have it. Ben has six of them. They're just good. They make you focus on what's important in your life. Ridge, our promo code is TIM, T-I-M. If you're going to buy the wallet, and you should for your family and friends because they're going to need a wallet when they have coronavirus and they're fucking about to die. The Ridge wallet is beautiful. I'm a fan of Ridge, baby. I love a Ridge. You know, have you ever been in a beautiful natural setting and you just see ridges, the little ridges, the little mountains? The Ridge wallet has nothing to do with that, but it is a wallet that you can use. It's not leather. It's modern. It's hip. It's sleek. It's a TikTok wallet. You're going to be young. You're going to be 19 again. Your cock's going to be hard. You're going to have a big future ahead of you. You're going to be famous and rich, and everybody's going to love you. Your parents going to look at you with pride. Your little brother's going to stop doing heroin in his room and come out and tell you that that wallet inspired him. They're going to say, you're the one, Den, Dennis. You're the one, Peter. You're the one that helped me turn it all around. I saw that Ridge wallet. I said, I want to be like my big bro who's got a Ridge wallet. You put that Ridge wallet in your pocket and you go on about your day. You know, this fucking dog that walks around upstairs. I want to kill these people. I mean, you know, musicians are the scum of the earth. I mean, let's really be honest about what musicians are. They're the absolute scum of the earth. Truly, they are scum. I mean, have you ever met a musician that didn't deserve to be burned alive? These people, their dogs and their kids walk around upstairs all day, and all you hear is this fucking thing's nails as it goes all over the floor. I mean, I'm just sick. I'm a musician. Shut the fuck up. Ridge Wallet is a fun wallet. It's fun and hip and young. It's not old like a boomer. It's young like a zoomer. You're going to be just TikToking, waving your cock around TikTok, saying, hey, look at me. And all the ladies are going to love you. All the ladies are going to love you. They're going to come in. They're going to say, hey, you, come make a memory with me, buddy. They're going to take you to Vegas, and you're going to win big. Oh, you're going to win big, you fat slob. You're going to have all the money you want. They're going to fill your face with meatballs and put their pussies right in your mouth. And you're going to be so happy. (laughs) And you're going to go back to your house. And it's going to be bigger and shinier and newer. And all the neighbors are going to be happy to see you. They're going to go, how are you, Clark? They're not going to avoid your gaze like they usually do and get into their cars with their kids. Talk about you as a cautionary tale. A creepy guy who they wish didn't live on this block. They're going to say, that's Clark, our buddy, our pal. He's a, he's a, what do you call that of the community? He's a pillar of the community. Mm. He has a Ridge wallet, son. You want to be like that man? He's got a Ridge. That's what's going to happen if you buy the Ridge wallet with promo code Tim. If you don't use promo code Tim, your entire family will die. Blue Chew. Oh, promo code Tim Ridge. Is that fine? Yeah. Uh, Tell me what to say. Just say, get 10% off today. Hey, hey, get 10% off today. Today, right now, as soon as you hear this, Ridge, Ridge.com slash Tim, T-I-M, Ridge.com slash Tim, T-I-M. In all seriousness, it's a great way to support the show. Buy the fucking wallet. Use the promo code. Blue Chew, cock don't work. What else is new? Get a cock. (laughs) <laughs> get a cock. Blue Chew, you're going to get a big cock in the mail. Now, oh, let me read this. What the fuck these people are slinging? <laughs> Guys, remember the days when you're always ready to go? Now you can increase your performance and get that extra confidence in bed. Listen up, bluechew.com. That's blue like the color blue. In case you're full retard, we know many of you are. You can take them anytime, day or night, even on a full stomach. And since they're chewable, they work up to twice as fast as a pill. So you can be ready whenever an opportunity arises. Just make sure that the word consent is in your mind. If you could benefit from more confidence where it counts, Blue Chew is the fast. And you know, I want to go up to the stairs and choke their dog to death in front of them. He's not moving now because he kind of knows when I'm upset at him. Mm. But 
All he does is like scamper up and down the fuck, you know, it just, it's inconsiderate. You know, apartment living is truly in LA, it's for the damned. In New York, it's fine, but in LA, you should own a fucking house. Thanks for telling your friends about the show, you fucking nothings. They're made in the USA, who cares? The cock pills are made in the USA, it's the only thing we're making in the USA. It's even worse than made in the USA. Wish they were made somewhere else. They're made in the USA. This is blue chair, a true blue chunk. Since blue cheese <laughs> prepares and ships direct, they're cheaper than a pharmacy. And best of all, there's no more awkwardness. Right now, we've got a special deal for our listeners. BlueChew.com. Listen, promo code Tim, you just pay $5 shipping. Promo code Tim, BlueChew.com, promo code Tim, $5 shipping. That's B-L-U-E, Chew.com, promo code Tim. Try it free. You've got nothing to lose. M many of you, your dick's not great, probably, but if it's hard, it's better. So get this, it's free. You people, you know, what are you gonna do? I would I, I I've been given uh samples of these. I should I'll try them. You know, I don't want my dick to be hard for that long. I don't want anybody getting the idea that it's about them. I just want it to be hard enough for it to just do what it has to do. I don't need it to be hard forever, you know, but many of you have got something out there to prove. I don't really care. I'm not in it for anyone else. You know what I mean? I feel I'm like a king. Sexual objects should be brought to me, and then we, I, I should just, they, then they're taken and killed. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't care if the person that's about to go to the gallows is like, well, the king, the king didn't seem that into me today. He didn't really go for that many rounds. Hey, shut up. You're about to get hung. He fucks him and he just throws him away. All right. Folks, it's all a joke. Love is so important. Blue Chew is the better, cheaper, faster choice, and we thank them for sponsoring the podcast. Valentine's Day is coming up. You want a fucker in a mouth? Valentine's Day, you want a fucker in a mouth? Don't you want? Don't you want a fucker in a mouth for Valentine's Day? You just fucker, you fucker right in the mouth. You know, because it's Valentine's Day, Saint Valentine, whatever that is. That true? No, probably not. It's Valentine's Day, folks. Fuck her in her mouth, in her ass. Fuck him in his ass, in his mouth. Whatever you want to do. As long as everybody's above age, nobody's being coerced, nobody has a gun to their head. You know? Even if it's a prostitute, you don't want to let them down. Don't let your prostitute down with your, with your fucking little soft penis. Then she's got to hear you talk about the fact that you were in a band. God. God, musicians should just be attacked every day in the street. People that play music for a living should be attacked every day in the street. Every day. They should have not a moment of peace. That's Blue Chunk. Sorry, <laughs> Blue Chew. I'm so tired. Blue Cheese. Blue's Clues. Blue Balls. That's B-L-U-E Chew dot com. Promo code Tam. Try it free. It is your dick not work and your girl's a whore. Who are you going to call? Bluetooth.com. Because if she got a soft dick, she's going to go fuck her father. And that's not good. Bluetooth.com. <laughs> she's going to fuck her dad. She fucks her dad. All right. Um, <laughs> well, so, can Citibank sponsor this show <laughs> so I can make a little money here, please? Sitting here at fucking two o'clock in the morning, screaming like a lunatic. I'm, I'm looking at my roommate's costumes in a, in a corner in a room here. I'm going to start putting them on. Bluetooth.com, promo code Tim, try it free. Get a Ridge wallet. Get some cock pills. Get the other thing, we, the, uh, the Manscaped thing. You know, we we're we're gonna tr we're trying to get more ads here, but you know the people that get us ads seem to be they they seem to be very relaxed about the ads. They all seem to be like, oh yeah, there's no killers out there. I mean, I'm sure there are killers in the podcast ad space. We don't know any of them. These are all fans of comedy, which means they're derelicts. They're degenerates. You're a fan of comedy. You're a degenerate most of the time. Not all of the time. Not fans of me. Fans of comedy. You know, like the thing, like to be fans of specific people is fine. But to say you're a fan of comedy means you should be hit by a car. Okay. I do want to giggle. <laughs> I'm a fan of comedy. I'm a retard. Yeah. 
You fan of comp? What does that even mean? I'm a fan of I'm a fan of laughing. We're all a fan of laughing. Shut up, stupid. Not you. Everyone. So what I mean is that if if you, if you want to advertise on the show, please just contact us. Okay. Email fucking the show. Do we have an email for the show? The, the Tim Dillon Show at gmail.com. Yeah, to email us. And not with horse shit. If you have a real ad, now I don't care what it is. We have no moral qualms about anything here. <laughs> I will advertise for a dictator. Literally. I will advertise. If the U.S. is going to invade your country and you're a genocidal dictator, email me. And I'll try to build up some good, good, good karma for you on this side of the pond. I'll try to get some 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 good thoughts out there in people's heads about what you're doing. Email me, Bin Salman. No, but he's our best friend. We love Saudi Arabia because that's who we did 9-11 with. <laughs> Have you been to Chili's recently? Chili's, yum, yum, yummy. <laughs> you want your ribs? Come and get your ribs. I want my baby, my baby. <laughs> I mean, it's a real... That's the country. I want my baby back, <laughs> baby back, baby back ribs. Come to Chili's. Come to Chili's and then go watch a movie. Go watch a movie in a big parking lot after you filled yourself with Chili's. Maybe Joaquin Phoenix will be in it. Oh, boy, it's late. We're getting a little nutty, folks. This isn't me. It's the uh, it's the Waffle Sunday talking. We shouldn't have had it. I should have had the wellness shot. How's that wellness shot sitting? It's decent. It's not bad. Shut up, you bitch. Try to make me feel bad. I didn't have mine. I took one sip of that. I'm like, the fuck? I'm it's a wellness shot at Mel's Diner. It's insane. Wellness. Uh, we don't have much else to say here, folks. Uh, all right. We don't guarantee results. Jewels by podcast with Tim Dillon. Full website being launched. We have a reel coming out of real people talking about how this has literally changed their life. How literally before they started selling jewelry, they were living in the street and, and they, were live, they were bathing in their, in their own piss. But it's, and then they started selling jewels. They started pissing on others. That's what America is about. One day you're bathing in your own piss. The, other, the next day you're pissing on someone else. Because that's what this country is about. Piss. And puppets. I want to go see the puppet. Um, yeah. 9-11's fake. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody worked in those buildings. They weren't even there. I'm kidding. I'm joking. I'm joshing you. I'm pulling your chain. We're just pulling your chain. But it was fake. Uh, probably. I don't know. What are you going to do? <laughs> Buy the dick pill, please. That's all we're doing here. Selling you cock pills. I just ramble in between cock pill ads. Mm -hmm. Just put your mushy mashed potato cock in, in somebody. But before you do, chew, chew some of these blue chews, mm -hmm. you animal. Good night.